What's up guys, Matt with Chrome Donkey here. Hey listen, I wanted to talk with you guys a brief bit about helium mining, which is a new project I got into earlier in 2021. And for this video, I wanna give you a brief tour on how I've got this external enclosure set up and ready to be mounted up on a telescoping mast on a roof. So essentially what I personally have are the Bobcat miners, the Bobcat 300s. Now of course you can get many different uh, manufacturer miners and they each have their pros and cons, but for this purpose, uh, we're talking about the Bobcat, but really this would work with any miner. So really what I first started off with is one of these uh, junction boxes, and basically this is a waterproof enclosure, and I'm gonna put the links to all this in the video description below so you guys can follow along if you'd like to order some parts. Uh, affiliate links, so I really appreciate you using the links. It really helps out the channel. Gives me a you know few extra dollars when you purchase through the link. So hopefully me corralling all this stuff will make it easy for you. But so you start with the waterproof enclosure here. And I've got two of these vents, which again, leave the links to. And you know, you you may or may not want to do the vents based on your climate. For an example, if you live in a super cold climate, you probably don't need to vent. Uh, for me though, I live in the southeast US, so it gets super hot. And we really don't have a problem with, you know, moisture condensation because it is so hot. Uh, but basically, I wanted to make sure that I have proper ventilation so that the Bobcat doesn't overheat because it is actually prone to getting a little bit too hot. It's certainly designed to be an inside enclosure, like in your home in AC, uh, but it can be made to work. I already have three of these deployed. They're working perfectly fine. And uh, this one, basically, I'm getting staged and ready. So you may notice this reflective tape. Now this is not complete. I actually ran out. So I'm gonna you know, finish running this along here, anywhere on the top of the vents that is gonna be exposed to the sun. Uh, basically this is just reflective tape that's got a you know, 3M backside on it so it'll stick to the box. So every little bit of you know, sun, a ray, reflection, so it doesn't get that hot inside the enclosure is gonna help. Now, as far as the, the bottom down here, this is where I've got the antenna connection with the end tight bulkhead fitting and also a coat or a uh, ethernet cable pass through. Now, right now I've just got it loose, but there is actually, show you this little guy. This is the fitting that will actually allow the ethernet cable to pass through and remain watertight. So that actually screws onto the outside, but right now I'm just testing it, so no reason to affix it permanently. So that's on the bottom. Now, on some of the earlier builds that I did, I actually put the end-type bulkhead up here, which is the top of the box, which actually makes connecting the antenna easier, but over time, any type of tape that you put around this top could fail. And yes, the end-type bulkhead fittings are supposed to be waterproof, but it's going to be exposed to the elements, the rain, you know, anything that you get all the time because it's sitting right there on the top. And that's assuming you don't mount it in a shaded area. But for me, these are on telescoping mass. So they're literally just up there. So what I've started doing on the later builds is I've actually done all the holes that I drill here on the bottom. And then I just take a cable, I use LMR 600 and just come around and go up to the antenna. Um, now you can, okay at the cost of some DBI, you can actually get these 90 degree in type connections. But remember for every connection, you're losing a little bit of signal. So you really wanna to try to keep those connections and junctions to a minimum. So that's really the ex exterior, right? So I've got the in type bulkhead for uh, the actual antenna and cable and the ethernet going in, which is PoE. Now inside the box, so this is what I have set up inside. So you can see on the, the opposite side of the vents, they already have this screen to try to keep out any insects. And on the top one, I have a, I believe this is an 80 millimeter fan, again, links in the description, that exhausts hot air, but it's not running all the time. I actually have it on one of these temperature probes where you've got four different temperature levels and an actual sensor that you can see right there. So once it reaches a certain temperature inside the box, it will then kick on to exhaust any extra heat. Now this is uh, you know, a uh, 
moisture absorbing pad. I realize you take it out of the cellophane, but I haven't, I'm not ready to mount this thing yet. I just put it in there so you can kind of see where the plan is for it to go. It's gonna be right there at the bottom, or right there at the top rather. And then on the actual Bobcat itself, you can see it's running, mining right now. Uh, I actually had a buddy, you know, shout out to Jose, 3D print me a, I believe this is a 140 millimeter fan, but again, I'll make sure and double check, link in the description, but 3D print me a mount. So basically, show you this. So this is the top of the Bobcat. So this cover comes off and basically he 3D printed me one that's essentially the frame, except it's got a huge cutout right in the center with mounts for that larger fan for cooling. And if I can find the plans to that, I'll also link that in the description in case you guys have a 3D printer. Uh, but basically this is gonna run all the time. Now I've got it switched off for purposes of the video, but it will run on low pretty much all the time and just sit there and blow some air, you know, on the Bobcat. Uh, let's see what else is up here. So I've got the temperature probe. I haven't zip tied all this in yet, so I could show you. Um, you can see right there, that's the end type bulkhead fitting coming in. And I'm also gonna leave a link in the description on a mod that I did to the Bobcat that basically will bypass the uh, RP SMA connection. So you're going IPX directly to the antenna board inside the Bobcat right to the end type bulkhead fitting. So you're basically bypassing a couple of internal connections where you lose a little bit of signal. And I've got that uh, done as well. Now I'm also going to leave a, a link in the description to these splitters. I've got a couple of five volt to USB connections to power everything. And that's basically it, guys. So if you've got any questions, leave some comments below. I'll be happy to answer them. And happy mining. Okay, guys, before we wrap up this video, I wanted to try to walk you through a little bit of the wiring schematic that I did with this build because it was a little bit tough to show you uh, inside the enclosure. And, you know, obviously, for forgive the crudity of this example, but I just pulled up paint and was trying to give you guys the highlights. So... Basically, if you follow the Ethernet line coming in, you know, that's that line off to the left. That's going to be your PoE connection that you're running from, you know, outside, uh, from inside to your router, wherever your source for Internet might be. You know, in my case, that's a long 100, 150 foot run of uh, at least Cat 7, you know, because it's going to be outside exposed to the elements. And nowadays you can get Cat 7, Cat 8 for real cheap, even with the long runs. So the more shielding, the better, I feel like, when it's, you know, outside in the elements. And when you go inside the box, as you can see, that's going to be a bulkhead fitting that gives you the watertight connection that you'll need for the Ethernet line. And I did show you guys a little bit of that in the video. And once you come inside the Bobcat, that will plug into your PoE splitter. And the PoE splitter on the opposite side is going to have one short Ethernet cable and then one 5-volt female connection. So <clears throat> we need more connections than just the one 5-volt because the Bobcat itself will need a 5-volt as well. So what you do then is you take a 5-volt splitter, which will have a male end that goes into that PoE splitter. On the other side, it will have three female five volt connections now it's up to you you can do two a split with two or a split with three now in my case i'm running two separate fans inside the bobcat and i wanted those to be powered differently in other words i wanted one to come on with a temperature sensor and one to run all the time so that's the reason i chose the three split now if you only wanted you know essentially a, a two split or a single fan, I should say, you could get away with a two split. Now, in my case, I did the three, and one of those connections, uh, you'll have a five volt to USB adapter that plugs into each of those for your fans, at least if you follow my build, because they are USB powered fans. So you'll get the, the five volt male into the splitter's female connection, and on the opposite side of the adapter is a simple USB plug. So You'll plug your fan into one of those directly, which is the one I've got mounted on top of the Bobcat. You'll plug the temperature sensor, 
into one of the other ones, and then the corresponding fan that you want it to control, uh, the actual fan controller has a USB port in it itself to control the fan. And then lastly, on that third split in my build, you won't need any adapters because you want the five volt plug going straight into the Bobcat. So that's a little bit about, you know, how the, the breakdown inside the enclosure works so that you can get everything powered. And then the only other thing you'll see on this schematic is that um, other bulkhead fitting. Now, again, in my case, I did the build, like I mentioned earlier in the video, where I completely removed all RP SMA connections from this build. So essentially what I do is go in type bulkhead fitting and on the inside of that bulkhead is an IPX connection. Now it's fairly short, so you'll have to make sure that you orient the Bobcat accordingly so that you've got enough length. But basically what I did with mine is I drilled a tiny hole in the Bobcat frame, popped that little IPX plug through the hole, and then went straight to the LoRa board, the LoRa module, and plugged it directly onto that board. So the way the Bobcat is internally, you've got the RPSMA, or at least originally, you have the RPSMA female um, or the RPSMA connection on the back of the Bobcat. I'm not sure if it's male or female, but that's where you're designed to screw on the OEM antenna. So you remove that because it's an IPX connection on the board. Then you have another short IPX jumper cable that comes off the main board up onto the lower module. So when you think about it, You've got the main antenna connecting at the back, and in, in the exterior builds like this, what a lot of people have done is they'll have the actual RP SMA connection onto the back of the miner, and then it goes to an N-type bulkhead fitting like I've got here. So when you think about once you come inside the enclosure, that's going to be one, two, three, four connections because you're connecting at the back of the Bobcat, it goes to an IPX connection on the main board. Then you come off the main board up onto the lower module. And then remember, you still have to connect your antenna cable on the opposing side of that N-type bulkhead. So that's a lot of connections. So basically what I've done is completely eliminated all that. So whenever you connect your N-type cable to the exterior of the enclosure, it is literally going directly to the lower module. So it's bypassing all those additional connections. Now, granted, you may not be losing a ton of signal strength there, but every connection, as we all know, you're going to have a little bit of signal loss. So the name of the game, of course, is to get your, your ears on as high as possible, right? You want to be able to witness the most amount of hotspots possible. It's not so much about the transmit power as, as we've come to find out. So when you look at your witness count, that's not really the most important variable. You need to use something like Helium Geek or one of these apps that will show you how many people you are witnessing, not that are witnessing you. So every little bit of signal that we can squeeze out of these things and sensitivity, that's the goal. So again, thanks for watching the video. Please leave any comments, any questions that you might have below, and I'll happily answer them to the best of my ability. And happy mining. Take care, guys.